Hi, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about financial freedom. So this is gonna be about how you can use a community interest company to gain some financial freedom, gain control, um, to be able to give up a day job and gain grant funding, and also to be able to long-term invest that money wisely and be financially free. So before I jump into that, please hit the subscribe button. On this channel, I talk about everything to do with community interest companies, grant funding, being a community artist. That aside, let's jump into this video. So financial freedom, is this is something that I feel really strongly about. Um, I think that a community interest company is an amazing way to start a business that you're passionate about, that you love, that is, um, does benefit for the community, that also enables you to get grant funding, to pay yourself, and to also um, create this incredible company. I'm also really passionate about actually making that sustainable long term. And that means I give lots of advice um, to my people, my students and the people that I mentor about how to also um, do other sideline businesses, how to invest properly and how to create um, really the long term goal of financial freedom. So where do I get this inspiration from? So a long time ago, I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This book is fantastic in the way it lays out the, the various different levels of income. So for instance, so if we look at what this book says, it basically takes you through the various different models for you to think about. And I wish this was taught in schools because I really feel like people don't understand um, financial investment, they don't really understand financial literacy. It's not something we're talked about in school. And if you're not from a rich background or a business background um, from your family, you may never be taught this stuff. So I think this is really useful, so let's have a look. So the first level that they talk about is um, when you're employed. So when you are employed, you work for a salary. Um, now, I'm not knocking employment. I think that employment is fantastic in terms of gaining experience. There's an amazing, interesting jobs out there. I'm certainly not knocking it at all. But one of the downsides are, especially in the current financial climate, is that it's actually quite hard to um, really, you know, kind of get any kind of financial freedom, pay off debts. Um, get a mortgage even, and certainly pay a mortgage off. Um, so it, it could be really hard, um, it could be quite trapping because you're paid a salary every month for the work that you do for that company. So the next stage away from that is when people tend to give up their jobs and they start their own business and they become a freelancer. So when you are a freelancer, the great thing about being a freelancer, and I did this when I gave up my job as a probation officer, um, is I was doing freelance photography, I was doing wedding photography, all sorts of other stuff. And being a freelancer is great in the terms of you get rid of your boss, you don't have to work for anyone, you choose your own work, you get that freedom of creativity. Uh, love being a freelancer, it's great. But you can get quite burnt out because you're still selling your time for money. So you can often pay yourself a lot more than if you're employed because you're setting what you need to be paid. So quite often you're better off as a freelancer than you are employed. So the next stage after that sort of self-employed freelancer model is when you own your own business. So when someone owns their own business, they're able to employ other people, and then they can maybe take more of a back seat. They can, you know, obviously delegate work out. They can, um, you know, they've got um, people doing the work for them so they can gain more income um, and pay themselves um, in sort of shares and obviously uh, dividends. Um, and so, yeah, so you're able to gain more wealth and gain more financial freedom if you've got your own business. And then the last section is investor. So um, that's when, of course, you're invested your money and your money essentially works for you. So say like you've got like, you know, rental, uh, you know, rental income from like a property or something, you're gaining that income, you're not working for that money. So that is the basis. So where do CICs fit into that? Because you might be thinking, well, not really a freelancer, because you have got your own business, but the business model is all about a profit-making business, and that's not what a community interest company is. So where does that fit in? So here would be my advice. So you might be wondering, how does a community interest company fit into this business model? Because with the business, obviously you can't take out dividends, you can't pay yourself in shares. Um, it's a, it's a non-profit making uh, business. So what I recommend, as I do say on this channel, is that yes, you have a CIC, which is fantastic for paying yourself. It's great for um, paying yourself for the work that you do. But what I recommend is that you have an LTD alongside of that. Now, if you're smart, you'll save up the money that you do from the work that you do from your CIC. You'll save up that grant funding work 
Um, you'll save up that money in your LTD. You'll also get other money from other sources into your LTD for whatever business it is you're running. Um, and then through that, you could then invest into, say, a property. So one thing I did with my LTD is I bought a derelict property in town very cheaply, only for 45,000. I did it up um, and uh, I also was able to get some local grant funding to be able to do it up because it's a high street property that was derelict. Um, so if you're smart about it, you can gain money, um, gain a property, and then I now I rent that property out as part of my LTD. So that's been great for me in terms of then, you know, having a CIC, doing the work from the CIC, that pays my bills. That pays my bills, that's fantastic, does work that I love. But then I also have an LTD where I'm able to squirrel money away, um, save up, gain property for, um, you know, gain property that I can rent out, also able to do other business activities which I can make a profit from. Because one thing that's great about once you start your journey as a CIC is you, um, you're doing fantastic property, uh, doing fantastic projects, you are a project manager, you're able to design this career for yourself, you're able to um, you know, really create a name for yourself in whatever sector it is that you're working in, and you're um, you know, able to leverage yourself as a successful professional person, and you should be able to then uh, you know, build a portfolio that you can then get work from um, you know, as, a, as, a, as part of your LTD or as a self-employed person. One of the amazing things about having a CIC and being able to get grant funding is that you get paid uh, large pots of money that you don't have to pay back. And um, that money is a bulk payment. So having that bulk amount of money, you know, get a 10 grand grant or a 30 grand grant, um, to have that bulk bit of money um, you, um, is fantastic because how often in life are you able to pay yourself that much in advance? You do have to be a bit careful because I know the National Lottery um, prefer if you if you put yourself down as a sessional worker they want you to pay, pay yourself after you've done the work but if you but if you put on your budget that you're paying an LTD um, you can pay yourself um, bulk bits of money up front I don't recommend you pay yourself the whole amount uh, I recommend you chunk that out into maybe two or three payments but still you're able to get large chunks of money and how often in your life are you able to get chunks of money like that you know, it's not often because mainly in jobs, you know, you're being paid monthly. So this is a unique position where you're able to get access to capital um, in a short space of time. So say you're somebody who's got a lot of debts, maybe you're employed, you've got a lot of debts. This is a great thing to do to maybe start a CIC alongside your employment even to begin with. You can um, do a project in your spare time, get grant funding, do the work, and you can use that money from the work that you've done to pay off your debts. That will get you started, and then hopefully you can grow from that, give up the day job, move on to the next stage where maybe you're gonna get a mortgage, or you're maybe gonna invest in property that you're gonna rent. So this model is absolutely revolutionary, I think, financially for most people's lives. It certainly has been for mine. If you think I've gone from a probation officer earning a regular wage, living in a one bedroom flat, I wouldn't have been able to have afforded to leave. And here now, 10 years on, I've got, you know, uh, I've got three companies, got two LTDs, I've got a CIC, I own my house, I'm looking to move again uh, to a bigger house, I've also got rental property. So, you know, I've gone from somebody who literally with nothing, and through having a CIC, I've been able to leverage myself so much quicker financially, but also in terms of, you know, just building my career and, you know, what I do as a person and as a professional person, I've been able to just leverage that so much quicker if I was to just apply for jobs and try to get a promotion and do that sort of old fashioned model. And if you think about it, you know, it takes so long to gain uh, any kind of financial freedom if you are in doing the employment model. You know, you might be paying off your mortgage for 30 years, um, it's really hard. Um, it, it's, you know, it's a lot easier if you've got obviously two wages coming in or maybe if you inherit some money. But other than that, like it's really hard um, just to get ahead and get any kind of financial freedom. And, you know, this isn't about greed or wealth or even becoming a millionaire. This is just about living like it's so hard at the moment just to be able to earn a, you know, a livable wage to be able to get your own house that you want. Um, so we're only really talking about, you know, getting yourself to a point where you're financially free in that, you know, you own your own property, you've maybe got a rental, uh, you know, you don't have any debts um, so that you can start to, you know, feel some financial freedom and the benefits that that has 
for you mentally, for your family, you could start to regain time. So I hope that this video has inspired you um, just to think about business models and how to maybe work towards the aim goal, end goal of being financially free. I'm really good at doing sessions for people around their businesses and looking at how they can work and create a structure of how they can work forward um, to gaining financial freedom. So do um, book a mentoring call with me, have a chat with me um, and I can certainly help you. I've got lots of ideas when it comes to businesses and I work with so many different businesses. Um, so I've got lots of knowledge. So I hope that helps. And again, please hit the subscribe button.